This is really cool. Kylan O'Connor posted this website the other day where you move your cursor around and the photo of himself sort of follows it around wherever it's going on the screen. And I looked at that and thought, I got to figure out how that's done. I got to be able to build that myself. So, of course, we went ahead and built it. We added a couple performance benefits, and then we took it a step further and made it 3D. So buckle up because we're going to break it down as to how it works, what it's using. It's all being generated from a single image as well as like, how do you build one yourself? So the way that this works is essentially just a whole bunch of images that have been tweaked where the head is changed up and down. It's using a machine learning model called expression editor. It's built on something called live portrait. And what that does is it allows you to give it an image and then you can change the pitch, yaw and roll of somebody's head. So up, down, left, right um, and and sideways, I guess that's your your role. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other options you can do is when you can open the mouth, you can change the eyebrows. I didn't touch any of that, which would be kind of fun to play with, but the pupil X and Y. So by generating an array of all of the steps, um, so if I go here, you can see I did 25 images by 25 images. That's 625 images. That's probably too much, but it's very smooth. But we take a look at Mr. Bean here. Um, I created an array of three by three, and then we figure out what the eyes are going to be and the, the roll and the pitch of the head will be for each individual one. So then I kicked it off to the Replicate API. You can download this model. It's open source. You can run it on Docker, but it is, it's something like 0.015 cents. You can run 600 of them. I believe at the time it was 1,000 per $1 of runs. So it's it's very cheap to actually run. It's probably not worth trying to run it locally on Docker. And it, it, it works in about a second. So simply kicking that off to Docker, and that will return each of the images. You save those to disk. Now, that will give you a ton of images. And one thing that Kylan did is he, he made it much smaller. He compressed them. Um, and that ended up only loading, I think he had loaded like 20 or 30 images on his thing. And, and that was totally fine for, for size and performance. Um, but something that I did when I got into the extremely large ones is I ended up with 625 photos of myself, right? And and that's, that's way too much to actually load on the page and you have to deal with preloading. So I took every single image and I stuck it as a frame in a video. I wrote an FFmpeg command, mpeg, here we go, wrote an FFmpeg command that would concatenate it. And what that did is it took all these 625 images, which was about 80 megs, um, and then it, it put it into a single video file like this, and that's about a meg. I could probably get a little bit smaller with a bit more compression. Then on the website here, if I just show all of the controls, you'll see that this is just a 10 second clip where every single image is an individual frame. And then based on where my mouse is on the page, I'm simply just scrubbing the video to that specific frame um, by doing the math with how long each frame was and the number of milliseconds in the video. Um, so it's pretty neat. You can uh, do a little bit where you can only do up and down, which is, which is kind of fun. Um, I did some that were only left and right, which would be kind of cool if you uh, have a little marketing website. You really don't need a 625 images to get a neat effect. I did use my dog, which was kind of terrifying. Um, and at, at that point, I was like, okay, I understand how this works. Um, but like, what else can we do to, to take this a little step further? And in the past, I had, had worked with, with depth maps, being able to make a 2D image and make it appear as if it were were 3D. And that's kind of what I did right here. So I used another package. It's called Transformers.js. And what that allows you to do is to run AI models in JavaScript. Um, and I used a package called, or not a package, a model called um, Depth Anything. And what that will do is it will return to you what's called a depth map. So if we take a look at my photos here, or I guess it's in outputs, West big, and then in the depth, you'll see that every single frame now has a depth map generated for it. And a depth map essentially is black is going to be the deepest parts of the image, and the white are going to be 
the most close to the camera. And it's just estimating that that based on what it knows about other images. So it's it's not using any sort of special camera or anything like that. It's just just estimating. And it actually works pretty good. You know, like you can I, I think at a very subtle it makes a a nice effect, but obviously you can go like absolutely nuts with it. And <laughs> and like go crazy. Uh, let's see, maybe what will I look like here if I go all the way crazy? It starts to look like The Sims, or I look like a toe after a while. But you can kind of, you can even like bring it sideways as well, and and see what it is we're working with here. So what this is doing right here takes all of those images, it takes all the depth maps, and then as you move your cursor around, it's applying the depth map on top of it and rendering it out to a canvas in 3D with 3JS. Now, about halfway through making this video, the guy who made this model worked with Kylan and generated another model, which will actually kick out the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, uh, a sprite, so instead of having a whole bunch of images, you just have one very big image um, with all of them. That will help with rendering. I don't know if that helps with the actual size of it or not. We don't use sprites too much, but maybe it did, as well as it kicks out a video. So you can just generate all of this just right from this one thing right here. I think it'd be really cool to also play with all the mouth. You can open the mouth, close the mouth. Um, do winks and whatnot. So you could wink if somebody was hovering over a buy button or if they were typing in their password, they could close their eyes. I think that would be a pretty neat one to do. Now, I'm going to recommend that you follow both the guy who built this model for FR and Kylan on Twitter because um, they've been posting a whole bunch of neat stuff that people have been doing with this. So this guy built Pong with it. Um, this guy built one where you can have multiple images all in one. The amount of creativity that people are having with this type of stuff, it reminds me of like the early, like I don't want to say web 2.0 days, but we were all just like mashing up new web technologies with new APIs. Um, and I think you're starting to see people be a lot more creative on, on the web right now because anyone can can crap out a whole bunch of slop and and, a, and show it like a, a half decent looking website. So if, if you can put something neat on your site, I'm not saying that this is going to sell more widgets or whatever, but when you can play with this type of stuff, it gets you excited and it starts get the gets those wheels turning going, ah, what can I do on my website that is is maybe a bit of a scroll stopper? Get something someone excited when they actually land on on my page. We saw that with the Lando video we recently did, and we're starting to see that with this type of stuff. So let me down know. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this type of stuff, and I'd love to see what sort of mashups you have as well. I put the code to my GitHub below. Hold on, subscribe. I don't ask you to do this often, but that was a pretty sick video. That was really cool, don't you think? Subscribe.